I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep the truth from you. This is a hard problem. Uh, it's made harder in the format of the book where it kind of doesn't use vector notation for magnetic fields. So we're going to have to kind of shoehorn that in, but I'm going to do it anyway because I just want to show you how to do it and I just want to do it. So um, I would do this a different way if it was all up to me, but I'm going to get chalk over me and that's fine. Okay. So the problem is number 56 from Open Sax Physics. I have three wires. And so in these two wires right here, and they form an equilateral triangle. So they're, they're coming in and out of the paper right here. So these two wires have current going into the board. That one has current coming out of the board. That's 10 amps, 20 amps, 5 amps, and it's a 10 centimeter uh, equilateral triangle that it forms. The question said find the magnetic force on every wire, but I'm just going to do the top one because it's, like I said, it's not the best problem. Okay, so here's the plan. If I know the magnetic field uh, at the location of this wire due to these two wires, I can say F equals I. Oh wait, what does the, what's the problem say? Because it should be the find the force that each wire experiences, the direction and force of the wire that each wire. Well, we can't find the force if we don't know the length of the wire. Okay, let's just pick. They, they tell us the distance of the wires, but I don't have L. Okay, so that's the problem. So let's just pick. Let's say they're all one meter. L is one meter long, just to make things easier. And I think I'm surprised that they didn't give that. You could find the force per unit length, or they have to give the length, and they didn't do that. I didn't write the problem. I'm just answering the problem. Okay. So I know the current in wire three, I know the length because I just picked it. If I can find the magnetic field at wire three, then I can find the force. Now the angle between those two is going to be 90 degrees. I'll show you that in a second. So the first part of the problem is just to find the magnetic field at this wire due to these two wires. So really we have this problem. I'll write it here. I have that wire, I have that wire, and I'm trying to find the magnetic field right there. Okay, And then I can put my wire there, and then I can find the direction. This is not easy, okay? Because if you were, if you recall, I can find the magnetic field due to a wire as two mu naught uh, over four pi i over r. So I know the current. That's just a constant mu naught over four pi is ten to the negative seventh, and r is the distance to the wire. But it's a vector. It's a vector. So if I want to find the total magnetic field right here, I have to find the vector value of the magnetic field right here, the vector value here, and add them as vectors. So let's say this B, I'm going to call that wire 1, is B1 plus B2. So that means I have to write these as vectors. Okay, so let's just kind of sketch out those vectors first. If you recall, uh, the magnetic field around a wire looks like this. If I have a, a wire going into the board, if I put my thumb in the direction of the wire, my fingers show the direction of the magnetic field. So it looks like, yeah, so it'd be like this. That way, that way, that way, and so forth. It forms this circular shape like that. So when I, once I pick my, my distance r, the magnetic field is going to be perpendicular to that. Uh, are vectors, technically a vector. Okay. So if I use that same idea over here for these two wires, this wire is going to make a magnetic field that goes, there's my R, it's going to be like that. Let's call that B1. And this wire is going to make a magnetic field like that. Now, can I find the magnitudes? Easily. Can I find the angles? And in fact, yes I can, because this is an equilateral triangle right there. So this angle is going to be equal to 60 degrees, because these are all the same size. And we're just doing a little geometry trick here. I don't like it either. It's just what we have to do. Um, so this angle is 30 degrees. This angle is 30 degrees. Right? I think so. Let's see, I think I kind of drew my picture poorly. So that's like that. That's 90 degrees. That's 60. That's 
30. I'm pretty sure it's 30 degrees. They're both 30 degrees. Okay, so let's just put that as 30. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Okay, now I can count the magnitude. It's going to be 2 mu naught over 4 pi times uh, this current, which is 10 amps. And that distance is 0.1 meter. Let's just get a number for that. Okay. I think it's going to be easier if we just get a number for that. So that's going to be equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 7. Mu naught over 4 pi is 10 to the negative 7. I, I messed that up. 2 times 10 to the negative 7. 10 times point. Why did I do that in my calculator? Okay, so I get uh, 2 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. And then let's get P2. B2 is going to be 2 mu naught over 4 pi. It's the same distance of 0.1 meters, but it has a current of 20 amps. So 20 over 0 0.1. And that's going to be equal to twice this value. I can do that in my head. 4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, but I need to get them as vectors. So let's just write this. So this one right here is the vector B2. That one's B2. So B2 looks like this. B2, I want to find the X component and the Y component like that. And I can write that, since this is the opposite side, I can say B2 is the vector uh, B2 cosine theta X hat plus B2, am I running out of room? Sine theta y hat and theta is 30 degrees so 30 cosine is 0.86 and I multiply that by b2 this one down here 4 times 10 to the negative 5 I get b2 is 3.46 times 10 to the negative 5 x hat plus 30 sine, oh, tangent, 30 sine is 0.5. So 0.5 times b2 of 4 is just going to be 2 times the negative 5th. 2 times 10 to the negative 5th y hat. Now let's do the same thing for b1. B1, it's the same thing, but B1 has a negative Y component, right? But we're going to use the same angle of 30. I'm going to use this value for B1, multiply it by cosine of 30, 30 cosine, and then I have 2 times 10 to the negative fifth times, I get 1.73 times 10 to the negative fifth X hat, and then my Y component is again 0.5, but it's negative. So I'm going to get 1 times 10 to the negative fifth plus 10 to the negative fifth y hat. No, I'm sorry, minus. I said minus. Okay, so now I have B1 and B2 in uh, component form so I can add them together. B uh, total is going to be equal to these two added together. So let's just drop all this stuff. I got too much stuff. So I have 3.4 times 10 to the negative. 5, 1.73 times 10 to the negative 5, and I get 5.13 times 10 to the negative 5 x hat, and then right here I have 2 times 10 to the negative 5th, and then 1 times 10 to the negative 5th, uh, negative, so I'm going to get 1 times 10 to the negative 5th. So that's x hat minus 1 times 10 to the negative 5th y hat. So that's my magnetic field, and now if we go back up here, yes, it's in this direction that's down a little bit because this is a greater magnetic field. I may have got those backwards. It doesn't really matter. But if I want to just find the force, I do know that the current this way and the magnetic field that way, they are perpendicular. So theta for the force is perpendicular. I'm just going to find the force, and I need to find the magnitude of this 
So the magnitude of B is going to be this squared, 5.13 squared plus 1 squared, and then times 10 to the negative fifth. I can do it that way. That's a little trick. So let's square that. Drop. So uh, 5.13 squared. This is a hard problem. I said that from the beginning. So you can't say, hey, this problem's too hard. And then 1 plus, and then take the square root. I get 5.22. 5.22 times 10 to the negative fifth Tesla. Now we are ready to rock and roll. We can calculate the force on that wire. F equals I L B. I, I just calculated B. I said L was one meter, and I is the current for that one. So it's going to be five amps times one meter times 5.22 times 10 to the negative fifth, and I get uh, five times 26 times 10 to the negative fifth. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I left off the scientific notation. So it's actually uh, 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth newtons. Or if you want to do it newton per meter, if I divide that by the length, it's 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth newtons per meter. Now, what if I want to find the forces on the other ones? You'd do the same thing, okay? Now I'd go over here, I'd find the magnetic field due to this wire down here, plus the magnetic field due to this one right here, find the total magnetic field, and then add it up. If you want to find the direction here, it's not trivial, and I'm not gonna do it, because the direction is a cross product, and it gets more complicated. So this is a tough problem. Okay, I wouldn't give this on a test, but I think it is useful to do uh, anyway, and I hope you liked that.